a special shout out to casting. You all, listen, you all outdone yourselves. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for P-Valley Season 1, Episode 6. And like I said, casting did an excellent job. Um... We're going to get to it in a minute. I'm going to tell you about this little piece of casting that they did that I just got my life off of. <laughs> it was the perfect person. <laughs> anyway, the very um, opening, there was a montage of Autumn and Mercedes. And they are doing this whole thing with their aliases. And they're running around town, baby, getting things together. And I mean getting things together. They These looks they were pulling... I said, y'all better do it. Autumn with that afro and them thigh high boots. I said, girl, you that's the best she's looked. This whole the whole time. All black with that afro and them boots. I was like, girl, get on down. Yeah, they they did their little waves. I was like, y'all listen. I got my life off the little montage of their little looks, honey. I said, come on, Thelma and Louise. They was getting it. They was getting it. So they go and they do their thing. And Maine has actually helped them with the IDs. That's the part that he's playing. He's getting these IDs together for them. And they are just racking up this here money. Now, um, there was a little running. Shell then put Terica into doggone, uh, not racquetball, tennis. Baby, she stinks. She that child ain't got no business to play tennis. She's supposed to be dancing. That's where her talent is, just like her mama. She's a dancer. She needs to be dancing, but whatever. And then we got it all figured out. Shell is actually her stepmother. Shell is her biological father's wife. So he was actually carrying on a affair with Mercedes. And then here comes Erica. So that's what that's all about. And um, naturally, we know Mercedes been running all around town with Autumn doing wrong. And she missed a couple promises and a couple little <sighs> times she's supposed to see her. So that's the whole issue. And Shell told her, you know, not only do you need to prove to the state that you can actually do what needs to be done to get custody back from for her, you need to prove it to me. And you're not doing such a good job. And I'm like, okay. But I, that whole thing is kind of like really crazy. It's like, I don't even see her ever get, it don't matter what she do. She could, you know, reach into the sky and pull a rainbow out. And she ain't going to give you that baby child. She's going to fight you and fight you and fight you. But whatever. Moving on. Let's talk about Mississippi and a little murder. So, listen. I said, all right. What's going to happen? Because he said he was going to take care of Mississippi. And I was like, don't get violent now. Let's see what's going to go on. Mm -mm. She approached him. I didn't know Mississippi had this kind of good sense. She basically told the producers and the manager that you're dealing with, they're a joke. They're a joke. Do, or how serious are you about this? If you jump on this the right way... I got a couple people that I can connect you with and we can get something popping because my numbers are good. I didn't know she even knew that much about social media, but she does. And she is popping. He's like, okay, so he said, so you trying to be my, my Keisha K or your my Keisha K or to my Gucci man. And she was like, yeah. So she said, that's right. Bitches got to want to fuck you and niggas need to want to be you, period. And so he's like, I'm going to use that line. He said, well, give the credit to where, where it goes because that was Uncle Clifford's line. I said, oh, Lord. So um, he asked her, what about your man? See, everybody knows that she gets beat, honey. And he was, had grabbed her wrist and she, he, she said, black girls don't bruise. He's like, yeah, really they do. You know, so everybody knows about that. But she's like, we're just going to go ahead and do that. They did these selfies, and they're basically putting it out there like they're messing around. I said, oh, Lord, this is going to be a mess. But very, very smart on Mississippi's side. That's very smart. But, I mean, you know, that's what the industry does. They're just doing it themselves. Anyway, move on. Here we go. 
Uncle Clifford. We go over to Uncle Clifford's house and we get to see this character. And baby, they could not have done a better casting job. It is Loretta Devine. And Loretta Devine is playing the grandmother to Uncle Clifford. And she is blind. She has diabetes. But she is a complete and utter mess. A mess. She's in there dancing to Bobby Womack. And, and they're just getting it. I said, look at her. Cutting up. Cutting up. And here we get to find out more that the club used to be hers. The pink used to be hers. It was something else back in the day. And she's, you know, took out, she made some bad decisions. She remortgaged and did all that. Then he did some stuff. And that's how they end up where they are. They're in the issue um, at this point. Now, dig this. She told him, who's this little fella that you've been taking up with? You bring him on over here. And that's what she said, nah, ain't nobody bringing nobody over here, this, that thing, and the other. She gonna say, yeah, uh -huh. all right, well, whatever. Maybe he can help with the paint, can he? She said, and then she said, because, see, you know, I put a little something, a little extra love in them neck bones, you know. I said, oh, no. she, Girl, you great work a little root out there on <laughs> dog on a little murder. I said, all right, granny. Granny's a mess, you understand? A whole mess. And she knows exactly what's going on with Clifford. And she's just on board with it. And it, I enjoyed her. I really did. I enjoyed her. Um, I ain't going to jump ahead because there's, there's some more to go with her. But we're going to talk about it in a minute. Big Al goes over to see Gidget's boyfriend. Gidget's boyfriend is in some seedy little motel. Maybe he got a whole drug thing going. A whole drug thing going. Got old nasty whores in there with their teddies out. Working it. I said, oh my. Got a whole little lab going. I said, okay, he in there getting head and carrying on. He is fine though. I said, okay, here we go. But anyway, Big Al go down there to see him. Here, he makes an agreement. He basically is going to be holding weight for him. And um, he said, you know what? If Uncle Clifford finds out, I'll just let him know. You know, basically, I owed you a favor from the time you saved me from back in the day or whatever. I was like, all right. So everybody's really trying to get their stuff in line just in case this whole thing with the pink don't work out. So I was like, ooh, I said, Clifford going to have a fit. And then he told him, don't let Gidget know that he's even in town. I was like, oh, he's messy. He is messy, messy, messy. Fine, but he messy. Okay, so Uncle Clifford ends up running into the mayor's assistant. I knew them two were going to run into each other at some point. They were at the nail salon, and he let her know, listen, I ain't trying to play these games with you. You got an ear, and you better use it. You're the first hoe that I actually graduated from out of the pink that got a real life and a real job. Now, show some gratitude, bitch. And you found out what's going on, and you let me know. I said, uh-oh, okay. And she was looking like, you know, she didn't know if she really wanted to play that game or not. But I was like, oh, jeez. Anyway, Autumn and Mercedes, them two, child, they living their best life. They getting their stuff together. Autumn had a conversation with Mercedes telling her about Bitcoin and gave her some advice about the gym and told her, get an investor. Get an investor. Period. It's like, girl, if you know like we know, you'll listen to Ms. Autumn, honey. So they're, 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 they're literally, they're really, really rolling, which is scaring me because that's how things get ugly. People get greedy. And this whole episode, we ain't heard about whatever his name is, Montavious, Dontavious. We ain't seen him. So that made me very nervous. I don't know what's going to go on with that, but we got him lurking around and we also have you know, the law, you know, the law. Cause I don't know what, I don't know whose account she's really carrying on like and what she done did so the law is always a factor and then we got this dude lurking around i don't anyway so here this was got real deep the brothers and corbin and andre they were together to do this here signing corbin act like he, he hesitated about signing child of one brother goes and pulls the damn gun on corbin 
uh, after because he was talking, they was talking real reckless, telling him, you know, I don't care nothing about our dad and how he, because what Corbin was saying, we need to keep this and do leasing. We need to do leasing and not sell this land. We need to keep a legacy like our father should have instead of screwing, you know, our father was trying to keep legacy. That's why it's all three of us like this. He said, I don't care nothing about the father, the one brother. I don't care nothing about the father. He messed up his real family and ain't nobody messing with you. He was like, I am real. I am real. That fool pulls the gun on Corbin and was like, sign the damn papers. And then he turns the gun on Andre because Corbin was like, yeah, right, whatever, you know. He turned the gun on Andre and told him maybe the Civil War really ain't over for real. So Corbin ended up saying, okay, fine, I'll sign it, I'll sign it. I was like, a mess, a mess. They are really, really ruthless and shady and maybe they're going to get theirs in the end, I'm sure. That's, they, they got a lot going on, a lot going on. Anyway, Let's go back over to Lil Murder that went over to Clifford's house with Grandma. Maybe they was in there having a good time. Grandma done sucked him right in, honey. Right in. And then she dropped a little information about the pink. So we got Lil Murder on board. His ears open to like, what the hell's going on really? What's really going on? Things is really, really bad. Okay. And he was like, yeah. Hey, child, they was over there telling stories and he hooked Grandma up with some weed. I said, Mm -hmm. So she got him on board. So somewhere in here, money ain't going to be a problem in a minute. I got a feeling. Not if little murder got anything to do with it. I like to say little murder. Anyway, Mississippi and Autumn. Okay, so the refrigerator can't hold no more money over Autumn's house. And Autumn also has a gun. Okay, she has a gun. And Mercedes hasn't come back to the club. So Mercedes had told her, you know, you can use my locker. And, and gave her a code. Mississippi seen her go. And she's going to say, what do you think Mercedes is going to say about you messing with her locker? What do you think she'll think? She said, well, what do you think she'll think about you taking her spot? She's like, mm. she says, see, only difference between you and me, I share my shit. And they had just, the girls had all just had a conversation about, like, they're all worried about her and the dude, her boyfriend, and this whole thing that it came out on social media with them seeing her and Lil Murder. And they're all worried for her. She's like, what y'all worried about? Whatever. But she she's worried, you know. And she kind of opened the door so she could see the gun. And then she told her the um, code to get in it. I said, oh. So I was like, oh, Lord, please tell me Mississippi's not going to get this body for killing this boy. Because she could have just let Diamond take care of it. Just let Diamond do him and be done with it. Anyway, I, I hope it's not. I would rather Diamond take him out or Big Al take him out. I don't want it to be her and I don't want it to be Lil Murder. Because that, I don't want to be either one of them. Anyway. Um, Andre goes and talks to the big man about the leasing situation and instead of the the whole he hasn't turned the papers in that they signed. And the big man said, okay, fine. He gave it the okay and told Andre, just do it and get that damn deal done and get the hell on out of Chuckalisa. And that's it. Just get it done. So Andre's like happy. He ended up having a conversation with his wife and his wife was like, wait a minute. Hold up, Andre. It don't sound smart to be biting the hand that feeds you. He's like, well, what if the hand just need to be nibbled on because it's shady as fuck? Talking about his godfather. And she went to saying something else to him. She's like, I need you to come on home. I Just close that up and come on home. I miss you and this, that, and the other. And when she got to tell him, I miss your hugs and your kisses. Then she went to go tell him about his little ding dong, honey. And he hung up on her. Clicked her right off the computer. I said, oops. Anyway. So then there was this little thing where Lil Murder and Mississippi were down talking to the manager, to his manager and the little producers and that. And he was talking about when he um, was supposed to come to the 
to a session and missed the session. He was actually over on Clifford's house, so he covered his tracks. Um, he didn't show up. And Mississippi, she knew what, like where he was. And she's like, oh, shit. So she jumps in. Honey, so they got this whole little thing. She jumps in, gets all up on his lap, honey, and then she grinding on him. And then she starts kissing him. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That's a no, no. So I was like, oh, oh. That's a no, no. I I'm telling y'all, that that's a no, no. Now, they playing the game online, taking selfies. That's the no-no. She done kissed him up in the mouth, baby. And listen, I done already told y'all, a little murder. She done kissed him in the mouth. Honey, he playing in the dark arts. It's getting ready to be a problem. That's going to be a problem, honey. Mississippi, don't you fall for a little murder. And a little murder, you know, he like both. So don't go, child. It's going to be a mess, child. Anyway, and then the little... and. I didn't like the way the little manager was looking. He might be the one to really go to the boyfriend and to her boyfriend and get it all popped off and get it started. I don't like him. I didn't like him at all. He he bothered me. Anyway, so Eloise, which is the the mayor's little sidekick chick, she shows back up with Uncle Clifford, baby, and she spills it all. She put Uncle Clifford up on game and said, you know what, the people can stop this, but they got to do a petition and they have to vote to stop what the mayor's plan is. And they're like, you know, the people in Chocolisa do not vote. And they were like, listen, you, she said, you are the mayor of Pussy Valley. Make it happen. You got to make it happen. Get on out here and make it happen. Baby, Uncle Clifford, I said, he always got a, got a plan. He went and bailed Patrice out of jail. She had been there for nine days. Okay. Nine days, and wasn't nobody thinking about her child. He went and bailed her out, told her that he put the club up to bail her out, and told her, so you're going to owe me a favor. She going to say, I don't make deals with devils. He said, well, I do, bitch, and you bet not be no flight risk, Miss Patrice, bitch. I said, oh, told her, how, how badly do you want this church? And that's Absolutely. If you can get the, the everybody at the strip club and you can get all of the church folk, there's the votes, child. She can get the church folks to do what she want them to do. He can get the sinners to do what he want them to do. And then they can get things popping. I was like, come on with it. Yeah, Uncle Clifford, come on. Then anyway, Andre and Autumn. Autumn ends up calling Andre. Because she there was this other little scene with Autumn and Mercedes. And they talked, and they both like kind of had a moment about the daughters and shared their stories. And Mercedes didn't know that her baby had actually died. She thought she had just left her baby where she came from. And she got that, and she's like, oh, she said, because sometimes I don't even want to live. And she's like, oh, no, girl, you always live, honey. Bones were meant to be buried, honey. You just bury whatever it is, and you keep it moving. And she told her, she says, you're lucky to actually be able to see yours again. And she's like, oh, shit, wrong saying. I did for the wrong girl. But she ended up, Autumn called Andre and told him, she was telling him goodbye. And I said, Autumn, what you doing? And I guess because, you know, she's she's pretty much ran the circuit there as far as the money goes. And she's Gary Lee. I hope that's what she's talking about. I hope she ain't talking about, like, committing Harry Carey. I think she's just, like, about to just wrap up her her little run and get on up out of there is what's going on. But anyway, the very last thing we see is Maine. Maine out doing, Maine had this badass jacket on, but he's out doing his thing, getting a little fat boy to wear his little anklet, right? And happened to run across a damn post out of Autumn with her real name on there saying that they was looking for her. I said, oh Lord. I said, oh boy, remember, with Dontavious or Montavious, whatever his name is, was at the police station saying he's looking for. So there's like post-its out about her. So I was like, yes, yeah, see, it's because it's been too much time. It's time to go. She need to get on up out of there. But anyway, that was it, child. There was a lot going on down at P-Valley this week. It was good, though. This was a really good episode. I liked it. Um, as much as I love Uncle Clifford, and y'all know I like Lil Murder, Lil Murder and damn... Mississippi do make a real cute couple too. 
But child, y'all in the dark arts, y'all y'all need to stop. Clifford, Mississippi, and Lil Murder, y'all are tampering in the dark arts, honey. Y'all need to leave it alone. I'm telling you, leave it alone, honey. Them love triangles always get 